Hi guys. Uh, so this video is about our flag pulling experience. Uh, if uh, you have already been following our channel then you might know that couple of months ago we have uploaded a short where uh, we just uploaded about our flag pulling experience but it was just a simple short there was not much information on it but after that a lot of people have reached out to us asking how uh, our experience was and uh, the process that we followed We are purely uh, going to talk about our experience so we just want to convey that uh, the experience might vary for other people uh, so before you go ahead for flag pulling uh, try to understand the process properly and try to find out whether it is suitable for you or not yeah a lot of people would have this question in their mind like what is flag pulling is this even relevant to me where should i go for flag pulling when's a good time i will break this video in few parts and answer all the queries one by one so flag pulling is a completely legal process here in canada and people generally go through flag pulling to renew their status who is it relevant for uh, people who have applied for their respective visas like if a student wants to do an extension for his student permit or if somebody has done a one year uh, study and has applied online and is currently waiting for his work permit and for any circumstance they have to travel abroad so in those cases it makes relevance to go and do flag pulling and if you are just going to stay within the country then i would suggest that you can follow the um, timelines that is there with the canadian immigration so when to go for flag pulling that's a very important question and indeed something to think about so the first and foremost thing would be it is only required to go for flag pulling if you have something urgent like you applied for a job and your hr isn't allowing you to join the company with, uh, without the work permit i merely less circumstances like that because here in Canada a lot of HRs are already aware about these processes. So in our case uh, uh, he was already having a postgraduate work permit approved and uh, my work permit was about to just expire in a week. My employer was asking for a renewed work permit and um, I, I did not hear back from my ICC so I just wanted to go ahead and try this flag pulling process. And in certain scenarios, like if you have to travel abroad, then also you can go for uh, flag polling. So next would be where to go for flag polling. There are a lot of orders where you can go for flag polling, but you should definitely check out their websites in order to know which specific border you need to go to and which days. And uh, before you choose any kind of location, uh, try to find out if there is a contact that is listed online so that you can just directly call them and check if flag polling is still happening or not and try to choose some location uh, which are operating on 24 by 7 buses uh, rather than just like few hours in a day so that is going to be uh, giving you more opportunity and more time to get your work done another thing that might pop up in your mind is that what documents to carry so you can always follow the CIC website they have a detailed guide about what to carry and what not to carry it depends on case to case basis since in our case I was a student and I had a postgraduate work permit approved for my spouse what we did was I provided my uh, graduation certificate along with my study permit and identification and she carried the same documents along with the letters which said that she has already applied for it looking at those and my qualifications she was granted a work permit based on the time frame and coming coming to the very last point about our experience how it was and what we did we would like to recap it a bit talk it in terms of at what time we started where did we go how was the experience at all those borders? Yes, you heard it right. We went to multiple borders. It was like about 3 a.m. in the morning when we started. Our first location was Peace Bridge at Niagara and uh, we wanted to uh, reach there as early as possible. And we arrived there before 7 o'clock and uh, 
we were actually in time and we knew that uh, the flag pulling doesn't start until 8 am and uh, we thought uh, we have plenty of time uh, before we can get our work done uh, but unfortunately uh, by the time we came back uh, from the US border uh, it was just 8 5 or 8 10 I guess but it was already closed uh, for the day we were really disappointed and we really thought like uh, this is something that we want to get it done so we chose another place yeah. and the second place that we went to was rainbow bridge this bridge has a pedestrian crossing and there are a lot of bridges here where you can walk over and you can cross this whole border thing uh, even though we were early enough but they checked our documents and then they said like they were not doing flag polling or for unfortunately that, that was another situation then we moved to the third bridge uh, that was Queenston Lewiston bridge and there I actually parked my car because I wasn't sure about how to go about it we were accompanying another uh, friend of ours who were also going for flag polling and uh, then my spouse and they all they walked but at the border they said like at this bridge they cannot do a pedestrian crossing so they all came back and we did it on our car yeah. so there were like five cars ahead of us and they allowed two of them and then the other three were refused at that border too by the time uh, whichever bridge we were going uh, they got to know that we have been trying uh, for flag pulling since morning uh, because in lot of places they will take your biometric so uh, they just uh, got to know that okay we wanted to do it so they suggested us if you want it so badly then probably you guys can go to the Sarnia bridge that is known as blue water bridge I believe uh, so they were actually open 24 by 7 unlike other bridges that is when we thought like it was a long drive though but since we have been already roaming since morning we thought why not to give it a try so that is when we started our drive towards uh, Sarnia and we arrived there I guess almost it was around 5 pm and they had kind of the similar procedure uh, and we had to uh, drive just a pointer here this yeah. is not a pedestrian bridge so yeah. you need a car in order to cross they asked us to uh, go towards the US side and there we parked our car again and then they did the whole procedure again of taking biometric and other things when our US side our things were done we came back to the Canada side and they were open and they have done for all of us finally uh, whatever we have been uh, trying since morning uh, we were able to uh, complete that part since we were at so many different borders we felt like everywhere the, the people that we interacted with they were very helpful you need to have proper documentation but they were always there to guide you yeah. so make sure that you carry all your documents make sure you have a proper status and then you can go ahead and share your experience here in the comment section Since I already applied a work permit extension through online and uh, it was still under process so already I have paid that amount but uh, when we were doing the flag pulling we have to uh, we have to pay the similar amount there as well so you can just uh, get it done there and as soon as you come back at home you can uh, raise a waveform where you can ask them to withdraw your profile so they will give you a full refund that's about our experience and hope we were able to uh, fill those gaps provide some extra information do let us know about how your experience was which bridge actually worked out for you guys uh, follow us on instagram you could see our handle popping up in the screen for quicker response and if you haven't already subscribed to our channel do subscribe until then stay tuned bye